Hi, everyone. My name is Mordechai Katzman, and I'm the president and co-founder of a company called Rethink Solutions. And today, I'm going to talk to you about your largest, or at least one of your largest, real estate expenses that really any typical occupier, owner, and manager of, of a multi-property portfolio is going to encounter. When we talk about real estate expenses, what comes to mind? I think typically most people think of utility charges, insurance costs, you know, HR fees, paying for your employees, administration, and a slew of others. But would it surprise you if I told you that in fact property tax is your largest expense? In 2017, in the US alone, over $530 billion was paid in property tax. And $300 billion out of that, or upwards of $300 billion, was paid by owners and multi-property portfolios, businesses, organizations. And what I still find interesting is when I'm speaking to multi-property owners and I ask them what they pay in property tax, I'll still get answers that are really in the form of ranges. Oh, anywhere from 200 to $500 million. At least for me, $300 million is still quite a significant range for you know, one of your largest expenses. I think that's because it's tax and people look at tax a little bit differently. Frankly, as soon as I mention property tax, uh, people's eyes typically glaze over. And I think it's because no one has patience for tax or even property tax. They see it as a tax that simply needs to be paid. And I'm here today to tell you that property tax is really unlike the other taxes. I think it would be fair if you're talking about income taxes or corporate taxes or even sales and use tax that are very fact-based. You're providing the individual taxing jurisdictions information about your sales, your profits, your income, and as a result, they're taxing you. But for property taxes, individual jurisdictions are telling you what the value of your property is, and hence, based on your value, this is the tax you're going to pay. But property tax is different. As I mentioned, it's really very subjective because you're getting values from the individual jurisdictions. And I should point out that there's over 17,000 different taxing jurisdictions in the US. So when you talk about transparency and standardization, it's all over the place. All the more reason that, meaning that this needs to be managed and can be controlled because there's tremendous opportunities for savings. Just to stress on that point for a moment, there was a study done by an international organization that measured all the various jurisdictions, both in the US and globally, and it found that the average US jurisdiction just got a grade from a C to a D when it came to transparency and standardization. Again, tremendous, tremendous opportunities here. Now, I was recently talking to one of our clients, to the senior property tax manager for this particular portfolio, and he had told me that the CFO now recognizes that they exist and that it's a good thing and a bad thing. And I proceeded to ask, okay, so where's this going? What's good, what's bad? So firstly, it's a good thing because he says, now that you're such a significant line item on our balance sheet and income statements, we need to be paying more attention. So whatever tools, resources you need to mitigate and control this expense and cost, we're all for it, whatever you need, you let us know. So that frankly sounded pretty good. So what's the bad thing? Well, he said, well, now the CFO knows that we exist, which means there's tremendous pressure now on this department to do something about controlling this vast and wide expense. Property taxes are also rising. And our research has shown that even when values are staying constant, meaning your values aren't going up, taxes are still going up because those local jurisdictions, their fees aren't going down and they need to pay for their local improvements, which is what the tax pays towards. Another interesting thing about property tax is that it's going to impact your organization in a number of different ways across all sorts of different departments. It would be very typical or traditional to find one or two people within a property tax department sitting somewhere in the office. Again, which department they belong to is usually questionable as well but sitting there doing their thing, managing their values, managing their taxes, and submitting some information to accounting. But as you can see, the entire property tax management process is very complex, and it really touches on all sorts of different departments. So yes, once you've verified your payments, you'll send it off to accounting, but you've got your finance department doing their forecasts and budgets in isolation, in a silo, using their own data, their own spreadsheets to determine what they think property tax is going to look like. You'll have acquisitions, going about acquiring more properties for your portfolio, sometimes doing their own workup or not even inquiring with property tax as to what the tax impact is gonna be. And what I'm happy to see that, that more recently, this is now becoming a requirement. Certain companies aren't letting their acquisitions team acquire without having sort of a suggestion or a report from property tax. And the list goes on. It affects operations, it affects your leasing in terms of setting your rents or even recovering tax from those individual portfolios. 
So again, it affects the entire department. And today, it's all done in silos, each with their own sets of data without one talking to one another. That's, so where, where have we come so far? So we've noticed that the property tax itself is gonna be one of your largest expenses. We know that there's significant opportunities for savings there. And we know that up until now, it's been fairly mismanaged as we've seen. It's all done in silos, it's all over the place. And there's a lot of data involved in the process itself. In fact, from a data perspective, because again, you're getting data from so many individual jurisdictions, it's not uncommon for an individual property to have at least 100 pieces of individual data on an annual basis. Again, extrapolate this to a portfolio of two, 300 properties, you're easily dealing with 30,000 pieces of data every year. So that's a concern. So what do we do? Well, we have to rethink the way we manage your property taxes. And that's frankly where we come in. Our solution lets you manage and optimize the entire process and bring everyone together on a common platform. And what that's going to achieve is it's going to allow you to empower your users to make smarter, better decisions when it comes to every aspect of your operation that, that addresses or includes property tax. And these aren't just buzzwords anymore. It's very important, again, all these technologies exist today and they fit quite naturally and very well within property tax. The ability to collaborate with those other departments, the ability to automate some of your workflows so as soon as you get a new value, forecast and budget has that so they know exactly they can alter and adjust in real time. You can integrate with other systems. You can apply AI to help you determine where the values are out of sync maybe certain values, certain properties. This is what we should be looking at to appeal to further drive savings. At the end of the day, I think we're all trying to achieve the same goal. The goal is to maximize portfolio value. And what I'm here to tell you today is that rather than you know, addressing the revenue side, which a lot of systems, and it's usually some of the easy pickings, to be able to you know, acquire better properties to make sure they're fully rented out, to drive and maximize the revenue from individual locations, that's obviously a way to drive value and revenues, but another way to do it is also by looking at your expense side and being able to control the costs, especially something as large as the property tax is gonna have a significant impact on the bottom line value. Said quite a bit so far. Just as a quick recap, if there's one message I can leave you with is that don't ignore your property tax. As I said, there's tremendous savings opportunities there. It's a controllable tax. Again, you just need the right tools, information and data available so that you can properly address it make well-informed decisions that will impact not just the tax side, but all the other departments within your organization. Thank you very much.